specifics on it, but it was, uh, you know, a couple of weeks he was out there, um, and we were playing out in practice this week. That seems to be doing well. I think he's looking forward to getting back out there and getting practicing, uh, feeling better. So, uh, you need to get back into the rhythm of practicing. And then, you know, once you get healthy again and you get back on the field, you start to feel better. But until then, yeah, he probably wants to get going and get anxious. Yeah. He's probably more of a swing guy now. You know, he can do both, um, and uh, you know, that which which is good. Anytime you have versatility, you can play both. But that's a good thing. So, uh, you know, played it last year, and, and uh, you know, played it obviously in the preseason. So, uh, you get both both positions. Uh, I mean, yeah, keep working at it, but uh, so far, you know, I've been pleased with the way he's played. He's been solid across the board. Um, you know, we'll keep evaluating, keep looking. We do. We have rotated guys in and out of there, which has been good. You know, we have a pretty deep offensive line room, which is which is a value, obviously, as we head into the second half of the season. Yeah, I mean, kickoff returns and, you know, and punt returns are very, very different. You know, the punt returns. Um, you know, nowadays they can, you know, they, they, they can kind of hold up the punt a little bit and allow in college everyone to get downfield, which is different than, than the pros. Um, so you see a lot of Australian Bulls guys come, come over and, um, you know, kind of hold it up a little bit, you know, rugby style, things like that. Uh, you get on multiple gunners. So it's a little harder to get those punt returns going. We've been working really hard. We were, little, we were close, a couple couple blocks away, just last week to get that done. Um, and so that, that, that part, uh, we feel like we're, we're closer than, than we've been. Uh, and, and he's a reliable guy back there. It's very important to have a guy like that. And when you have somebody back there who you believe in, can take it back, that motivates the guys in the entire unit to play, to give them a chance. So, but, you know, in terms of the punt returning, you know, that's a much different deal than kickoff return. Kickoff return is just a lot of momentum on both sides. And, um, and so, you know, it's it's one of those things we, we've looked at really, really hard to decide if you know, last year, as you know, we didn't do that. We tried to take the ball to 25 this year, and we're picking and choosing our spots. We think that it's, it's appropriate. And, um, and, and a big part of that is the guys who are on that unit. It's not just the returner. It's everybody involved. It seemed like it was like that the ball in the school and the next series. So just, I know your hands deep in the offense and play calling. What happened to us? Who else do you want to highlight that goes into well, it's, it's everybody. And it's, it's when things go good, when things go bad. You know, you, you try to figure out, you know, why that is. But they have very, very good players. That's the first thing. And, uh, those guys are doing a good job right now of executing. Uh, but in terms of the game planning and play calling, you know, Kevin and I you know, uh, do it together. And then, you know, certainly Stud and Tony and Brian Hartline and Corey and all the guys in that entire room help put that plan together on a weekly basis. And, but it, the most important thing is, is you know, certainly a, a clean plan, but practicing well and executing at a high level during the week so that when you get to the game and you put it back on the field, you can't just show up on Saturday and expect that to happen. So, you know, if we want to continue to build, we have to continue to practice better. Yeah, I don't know if we'll practice this week. Uh, we'll kind of go day to day and see how he's feeling, but... Uh, you know, he, you know, he's a guy who's been playing when he's up and out there. He's done a good job. He's just, you know, he's had a hard time staying on the field. And so, you know, hopefully, this is just another bump on the road. But once he gets, him, once he gets back, uh, he's a big part of our defense. I hope so. Yeah, we'll see. You can probably get a better idea towards the middle of the week. The whole, obviously, both the end of the seven, both the end of the field, so three. It's just how do you feel about where that position is in terms of, you know, not starting out there? Or that I mean, I feel solid about it. I, you know, I don't know. I can sit here and tell you I feel great about that right now. Uh, midway through the season, I think we're better than we were six weeks ago. Um, 
but, but overall, still looking for more consistency and more production from that, from that spot. Just Yeah, I don't know if I can put my finger on it, but we have some great, uh, great coaches in this league. We have uh, some great universities who do a great job recruiting, and, uh, and it's exciting. It's exciting for our conference. And, uh, and we got some of these big games coming up here in the next six weeks, and, uh, but, but it's great for the conference, and, and we're obviously excited to play. Um, yeah, I don't know how well I'm still sleeping. We've still got a lot of football left. We haven't done anything yet. Uh, but I think it, you know, there is uh, you know, some confidence being built. Uh, you can see that um, you know, some guys are starting to you know, settle into some roles. And that, that's a good thing. We're not doing everything for the first time. I think when we walk onto the field, we're expecting a high level of execution in all three phases. And uh, because of that, there's just a confidence about about the team right now that's good. But you know, the, the, the competition's going to increase. You know, we're going to have to go on the road here, night game in Indiana, and play well here you know, pretty soon. And, and, uh, and the, the games are just going to get bigger and bigger. So, um, you know, we'll, you know, we still have a young team that hasn't changed. But having six, six games under our belt, um, I do think we're in a better place than we're six, six games ago. I don't know if it's one or two things. I just think that as the, the competition increases, you know, things get harder and harder. Uh, you know, executing at a high level and, and using fundamentals and taking care of the football and tackling and uh, you know, all those types of situations. You know, because when you play in you know, matchup games, you play in tight games, every play matters. You know, every rep matters. And all it can take is one or two plays and the whole day can be ruined. And uh, while you know, we played well the last couple of weeks, that wasn't really the case where it was you know, coming out of one or two plays. And so just continually focusing on that, fundamentals, you know, winning the wars up front, the offensive defensive line, stopping the run, running the football, playing situational football. You know, it's going to come down to some short yardage plays here in some of these tight games, some red zone execution, those type of things. Yeah, we're keeping it as, as uh, game-like as, as we can. So Tuesday is going to be a padded practice. Wednesday will be a padded practice. And we'll take the pads off on Thursday. Uh, Tuesday for us is first and second down. Wednesday, we're down red zone. We can try to polish on Thursday. We're going to try to keep that momentum going because I think our guys um, have gotten a rhythm with that. We didn't practice on Sunday, and we won't practice on, on Saturday. Uh, so I, I think obviously we want to get some of those guys some rest and get them off their feet a little bit and recharge for this second half of this, this run here, but, uh, but also continue to work on fundamentals, keep the, uh, you know, good on good work going this week, and uh, you know, we've we got to keep getting better. I feel like we've gotten better, but we can't all of a sudden stall during the bye week and take a huge deep breath and not get better. But, uh, you know, there's, there's things about the bye week you really enjoy, but there's other things that you, know, you kind of wish you continued on the team because you know, we have gotten over the year, but, uh, but, I, but I think it's come at the right time. We've got a chance to also you know, just look at, uh, reflect on these first six games, where are we at, look at our personnel, look at our scheme, look at things across the board and make sure that we're in the right place you know, in these last six games. I don't know, you can look at it both ways, I guess, and make a case. Um, it doesn't matter because it's here, so we're going to make the best of it. But, um, no, I mean, I, you can look at it both ways. Uh, we're going to use it as, a, as an opportunity to, again, get on fundamentals, get stronger, get better against each other, continue to work on our pad level and execution on, on all three phases, and then also you know, get ourselves some rest so that we can you know, play at a high, high level when we go to Indiana. I feel better, like you said, uh, because we have more information. And we have real snaps that we can pull up on. Yeah, I think 
it's huge. You know, you can get caught up in all the scheme of it all, which we have to you know, change some different things up. But at the end of the day, it's going to be pad level with the line of scrimmage, defeating blocks and tackling and uh, you know, covering, you know, understanding the drops in the coverage and zone, technique and man to man, those type of things. When you, when you start going against better players, you, know, you really have to go back on those fundamentals. So, great opportunity this week to turn that on us. Yeah, we'll, we'll use some good on good. Uh, so the, the ones will go against the ones. Which is, we don't do a ton of that in season, do some, but, uh, but more, you know, pad level and those type of things. Uh, you know, coverage against, you know, our best corners will go against our best receivers. Our best tackles will go against the best defensive ends you know, all, all across the board. So that <coughs> we're going against really good players every day and have these fundamentals. Uh, there'll also be a lot of teach, teaching opportunities and so practice the next three days where, you know, we can get some things fixed or teach some things that maybe we see, you know, projecting out the next couple of weeks that we'll need. Well, I, I think, first off, you always have to try to stay a step ahead. And, um, and the good news is, you know, when you have weapons like we do, um, you know, if they take one thing away, you want to make sure you, you go attack them in another way. But the best part of this this job is trying to stay one step ahead and, and figuring out, you know, what, how are they going to attack you on offense and defense and, and having some change-ups but not get crazy. Because you got to you know, make sure you rely on the stuff that you know really well. And again, that's kind of the art of, of coaching, especially late in the season. Yeah, we're, uh, we went out yesterday. We'll be out Friday. And, um, you know, it's a great opportunity. It's the first time we've really been out back on the road again, which is which is really important for us. Um, you know, I don't know if there's been any Super surprises. I, I think that there's there's really some good things in there that he's done. He's, uh, the last couple of games, he's made good decisions. He's seen it pretty well. He's prepared at a pretty high level. He's shown some toughness along the way. Uh, but you know, as these games get tighter and they get tougher, you know, he's going to get challenged in different ways. And so the focus just has to be on the process of getting better every day and preparing and taking one game at a time because. Certainly in this league, what we're about to go into every week is its own, you know, story. And nothing you did the week before matters at all. And understanding that that's going to be important. Get some great feedback from the On Our Sleeves uh, Foundation over nationwide that they've uh, received a lot of positive feedback and a lot of donations, uh, which is really important for what they do there. Uh, the Behavioral Health Pavilion that really operates on a deficit that they don't make money on that, so they need that in order to operate and to serve uh, the Central Ohio area in that area. But uh, yeah, I've gotten a lot, a lot of positive feedbacks too, just on the messages and uh, people reaching out. And uh, the whole idea <coughs> was to bring attention to it and maybe help one or two people. Uh, you know, maybe it's more than that, but I just felt like, you know, the legacy of my father now can be felt that maybe there's somebody, you know, in Ohio or somewhere across the country that saw that story, um, asked for help, got help, or, or somebody, 
uh, was able to help someone that they loved and you know, called out something that maybe would otherwise get you know, pushed under the rug. And, uh, it wasn't easy to do, but uh, you know, I, feel, I feel better afterwards for doing it. And again, maybe it helps somebody out there. No, I think that they're, they're much further along than they were, um, you know, six weeks ago. Um, I know they all want to get more reps, and the more reps they get, they feel that they're, they're making progress. But the good news is they've, they've been in some games. And they've learned that, you know, you don't get a second chance in a game. You know, you, you kind of get that way in practice. We call it back. Let's run the play again. Well, when you're in a game, you either do or you don't. And that's about competitive excellence. And that's part of a quarterback that you got to understand. And the challenge for being, you know, a backup is you don't get as many reps to start. So, you know, those mental reps in the back and preparation that way is important. You see it across the board, um, whether it's college football or the NFL guys who step into that role. Um, it's a unique situation. You have to prepare properly for those, those types of situations. Some guys step in and you can just tell they're just not quite ready. And other guys have done a great job of preparing that week, knowing that they may never get the game. And, uh, that's a unique situation that they're worrying about. Uh, you, didn't, you never know. You might be right in the middle of it. But, uh, all it takes is one snap. And you're, you're the guy that we need. So, I think they understand that, but it's getting more and more real. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah. If it was a bigger one out there, I'd like to see who he looks like. Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, I think he stepped in and played well at times. He's done a good job. He's brought energy. Uh, he's done a good job in pass protection. Uh, I think the big thing with him is you can see what he's capable of. Uh, it's going to be the consistency. And again, as we start to go against uh, some of these uh, really good defenses that are coming down the tubes here, um, you know, he's going to get challenged. And the consistency is going to be critically important uh, because he, he certainly can do it. And you can make a cut up of, you know, if there's 70 plays in a game, you can make a cut up of 30 or 40 where man, he's, he's, he's doing a great job. And there's other ones where, you know, he's got to figure out, you know, what he's doing on that play that you know, he needs to improve on. Um, and that's, he's not, that's not unique to him. But one thing I'll say about him is he likes to play. He brings great energy uh, to the games, and uh, you know, he's got a very high ceiling. And I know we're in here talking about the hard conversations we're going to have with the defensive staff. And you see more pressure from the line. I would like to play better. Some of their bosses did. That probably wasn't easy. But has, have you got the results from that defensive staff that you wanted? I mean, we'll see. It, it's it's still very early in the process, but I think that the uh, the, the overall chemistry, uh, the confidence, and, and really so far the results have, have been uh, you know trending in the right direction. Uh, again, we got some bigger challenges coming here, but uh, as I sit here, I think we're in a different place than we were back then. Anytime you go through a loss like that and you have to kind of recalibrate some things and restructure things, it's tough. And uh, you know, I said publicly already that it's got a lot of respect for the way that that, that whole defensive staff has handled this last month, uh, but in particular, Harry. And uh, because of that, they've all gelled together with one voice. They've, they've come together, and that defense is coming together. And that doesn't just happen. You know, it takes special people to understand what this place is, what Ohio State means. You don't act that selflessly without really loving Ohio State and, you know, and loving uh, Buckeye Nation and these kids. And so when you see something like that, you got to call it out for what it is. And I think it's a great lesson for all of our players. Along those lines of the defense, I think we know that he's 
In terms of, right, I, I mean, that's the art of coaching. I mean, you know, there's times where you know, you got to just, you got to go, you got to put some things in and mix it up. There's other times where you, know, you, you get down with the game and you're like, we did too much. You know, and that's that fine line. And I have actually talked to the guys about that. We got to keep adding, but at the same time, we can't all of a sudden get down with the game and be like, man, we try to do too much for Jack of all trades, master of all. Like, that's not a good feeling either. And so that's the back and forth conversation that these guys have got to have. And, uh, and I trust them. And they're, they're preparing at a high level to get the guys ready and identifying what their guys can do better now. And so because of that, there's a lot of rhythm. And I also think there's just rhythm in the game right now for them where Harry's upstairs, he sees it very, very well. The information is coming down the bat. That's doing a good job of calling it. Harry's doing a great job down the field. And so is that. Talk to all season long about Harry with the limitations and um, I, I think that they're, they're getting better every time they play, for sure. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see, again, as we go into the, these last six games uh, where they're at. But there's definitely improvement. And, you know, I think when you can play two guys in each position, that, that, that helps. You know, when, let's say you play 70, 70 plays, you know, each guy can have 35. You can be more efficient, you know, when you cut your plays in half. You can just be faster. You can, uh, you know, you can play with more uh, precision. You know, just the whole thing. You can focus better. You know, when you cut those reps down, and then as they get one more reps under their belt, you know, then they can take on more reps. Uh, still, not a lot of guys on our defense that can play a full s- on the whole game with seventy some odd plays. You know, so we can get guys in and out, but it's starting to build up. You're starting to see those rep counts add up on some of the guys, and that's a good thing. Because if, if we're going to stop some of the offense we're about to play, the linebacker's going to play well. that we have, you know, really the run game, pass game, but certainly Larry um, and Al have, you know, a lot of conversations about the run game and how to stop the run and certainly how to get out to the quarterback. And, uh, Matt and Kerry do a great job in the back end in terms of you know, understanding the coverages. And, and then they're all getting in there together and uh, putting it all together that way. And I think that's important. And I also think they're doing a better job of meeting together as a group, the entire defense, so that it's heard from one voice. I think the players, the feedback I'm getting from them is that they appreciate that because they understand how the back end fits in the front end and, and everybody's, you know, moving in the same direction. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if I could name one thing, but I think it's just the whole thing. And it's just you know, job responsibilities and how it's going on, uh, how these guys are going about, you know, putting the game plan together and calling it. It just seems to be working the way it is right now. Yeah, the, the jet sweep is something that um, has really come into our game probably in the last three or four years. Uh, it, it's an opportunity where, you know, one of your guys is running full speed at the snap when everybody else is still, and, and you can get the ball either on a handoff or, or a quick toss, and he's going full speed the minute the ball is snapped. So that allows us to attack the perimeter. We try to find as many ways as we can, whether we bubble screen, run the ball, throw the ball out there, or this, uh, to, to attack the perimeter. And any time you can force them to defend the entire field, you know, now, you're, now you're creating space for your players. And then the same thing is, you know, vertically. You've got you to you push the ball vertically. Um, and that's the goal of our offense. You know, how can we stretch it this way and this way uh, to create more and more space for our guys? And uh, that's a play that we've used here now. You know, uh, we, don't, we don't use it a lot. We don't try to overdo it. but. 
appropriate. Uh, it's a great opportunity to get our guys the ball in public space. You're using this as Jackson last week. Is that something the receivers are planning for? Because you talked last week about not wanting to force the receivers in play. So I know that's a great way to get the ball and to get the ball in touches. But I'm curious, how much collaboration is there in the offense between uh, some better receivers or better guys? Like, do you talk to them? Like, uh, I mean, you know, we put the game plan together, uh, and then during the week we would we talk it through with them. And uh, there's certain plays that you know they really love. Usually it's the ones down the field or where they're touching it. Uh, but and then there's other ones that just don't fit. You know, you try to get. Usually it's in practice. You know, you can tell right away. Usually the first couple times you run it, if it, if it looks good, guys like it, then uh, you keep it. If you have to, you know, run it a fourth and fifth time and it just isn't working, you're probably better off just throwing it out. And that's where, you know, you try to make a decision. You know, you've invested meeting time, walkthrough time, practice time on a play. Do you keep it or do you throw it out? And that's where, when you get to that Wednesday, Thursday, you have to make those decisions. But, uh, but we're always listening to the, the players' feedback you know, in terms of what they think and what they see on film and how they like certain plays. Yeah, Coach, uh, you talked about the progress of the linebackers here a couple of minutes ago. You did ask about that. Uh, the other two lines, I mean, defense, the defensive line, the secondary, just in general terms, uh, the progress from game one to game six and what you see there, what, the, what both those units need to do. Yeah, we played a lot of guys up front. We played some young guys up front. Uh, and, and that's been a really good thing for our future. Uh, but we need. We need those veteran guys to play well for us in the second half of the season. So, looking forward to getting uh, you know, Tyreek back and uh, you know, make sure that we get through this week with Haskell and hopefully get him back next week. And, uh, and, you know, those, you know, anytime you, need, you make a run here in October, November, you need your veteran players to play veteran. Uh, I think we've created some depth there, which has been good. Uh, but you know, the expectation here will be high. So, looking forward to see that progress being made. Uh, but in there has been, you know, definitely been some. Some really good plays there. They've got the backfield. You can see the last couple of weeks we're creating more sacks and creating more disruption in the backfield. And again, as the competition increases, we just have to keep the build on that. In the back end, I, I think uh, you know we've been better, we're better than we were last year. Um, but there's still a lot of things to improve on. Still a lot of still some you know uh, some young guys out there. But again, it's the same idea. You know, some of the guys who have played out there before, like Seven and Cam Brown, and those guys. You know, we're counting on those guys to to be veteran and play for us. So, uh, but again, I think we're, we're better than we were, but we still got a ways to go. Since that a number of teams considered preseason have, have dropped games and kind of fallen off, and some teams that are now being talked about weren't being dropped in preseason. Keep in mind, I know you're focused on your team, but it's, it's an off week. Just your perception of having college football this year, and maybe there isn't that one elite or two or three elite teams that are going to run through the season. Just kind of what you've seen from the season you've been through. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it's been a unique year so far. Um, why is that? I don't really know. Uh, but uh, maybe it's coming off of COVID. Maybe it's the transfer situation. I don't really know. But uh, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a strange year so far. And I think you know, the teams that just continue to get better week in and week out are the ones that are going to show up here you know, in November. But uh, you got to take care of right now. You can't worry about all that stuff. But the good news for us is, you know, you like your own cold draw destiny in your hands. You just got to continue to get better. And that's all you can ask for. And so, uh, you know, not something that we were talking about you know, four weeks ago, but we're starting to see it a little bit now. And I think the guys are starting to believe. But you know, we got to go out and play really good against Indiana next week. Uh, we'll get that one and keep rolling from there. There's still a lot of things that need to get done before we consider what's going, what's coming next. But, uh, but it has been a very unique year. Uh, interested to see what the next six weeks look like. You talked a number of times about uh, challenges. Uh, do you like the fact that your team has these challenges now going into the second half of the season? And maybe use that as a, a motivation. That's not important. But, but looking forward, they know there's something to play for, and they know there's opportunity as opposed to maybe passing those games already in the first half. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's what you want right now. You, know, you want a team that's, that's building momentum, that's got a, you know, a couple scars on them, and you're starting to get a little callous to get a little tougher. So, uh, 
that's what this thing's all about, is building towards October and November. So, uh, still only coming into Game 7 here, but it's quickly getting, up, getting upon us, and, and that is exciting. Yeah, uh, I've been the last couple of months, Brian, uh, is there such a thing as a player having a for the kickoff returns? I mean, having a feel for it, I mean, having the, the, you know, the vision to see what's happening, but also the bravery to do it. And when did you notice that about Amiga having that? Yeah, no, I, 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 I think the answer is yes, there is. And a big part of it is, like you said, having the strength and size and the courage to run through all that smoke. And that's, that's a big part of it. But we also felt like the guys up front, we had a good group of guys that, that Parker felt like could give us a chance. And um, he's trying to figure that into it. Uh, when did that happen? You know, you kind of saw it a little bit in preseason, but it was never live. And then you, know, you try to project the best you can, and you see him just his maturity and the way he goes about his business and his toughness and the way he just things like that, you notice. And, and, and then as it's built up, now we have some evidence to show that, that he can do it. Bill Lennon and I are sitting here watching the game of that and it's a little bit of a twist in front of like uh, Thayer and, uh, and Nicholas on the left side. And the guy comes inside and he's got a free shot and Thayer's standing like a brick wall and stuff. It's just, you know, y'all watch those kind of plays and stuff. Like, you know, what, what do you see when you watch those plays? You know, you watch those kind of plays on video. What do you just tell you about your line, your veterans? Did you show that with the wand, for example? I mean, these moments go ahead. Yeah, well, I'll just... You know, I think one of the things that our guys have done a good job of pass protection is handling the twists, getting their hands on guys, and giving CJ a clean pocket. I think that's something that, you know, if you look back in the last six weeks, they've done a good job of that now. Again, some, some you know, better rushers are coming and more, more pressure's coming. I got it. But but overall, that, that part's been well done. And, uh, a lot of it has to do with how Stud, you know, uh, approaches it, practices it, the way we challenge each other in practice. But having someone like Thayer in there is a that veteran guy. I've seen a lot of that stuff, but it goes a long way. You know, the other night after that win, he wanted his players to feel good about being out of there. But what he most wanted them to feel is the work they put in, the preparation they put in, the process. That's what they should be happy about and moving forward. Is you got here because of this. Right. You sense your team grasped that too, especially after the work. Maybe there wasn't that long, but I mean, since that, we Yeah, I mean, that's that's been our message here for the last few weeks, is just how well you practice during the week is a direct reflection of, of how you play. Now, it doesn't mean anything. You can practice great all week. It just gives you a chance. You have to still put it on the field. But, but that's the routine that we were missing. You know, when I think back on last year, I'm not sure we went through a whole week without some sort of an interruption. And so those guys you know, who were freshmen who are now sophomores, and then the freshmen who are in the program now who maybe didn't even have a senior year of high school that they had never been through any of this before. And so um, now that we're getting into that routine, they're understanding that practice really does matter and that what you do in practice does make a difference on Saturday. And I think they're starting to see that, which is huge. And I'm sure that's what folks are talking about. Thanks, guys.